Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. In this episode and possibly future episodes, I don't really know at this time of recording, my plan is to take this body and put it onto this chassis. So starting with the body, this body is roughly modeled. I say roughly because it's not particularly brilliant. After the Fiat Ritmo Abarth 125, uh, anybody outside the United States, we got the car as the Strata, but in typical United States fashion, we never got the hot one. Anybody in the UK did get this car as the Fiat Strata, although the steering wheel was on the incorrect side. This is a remarkable car created in no small part to combat the Volkswagen Golf GTI. I'm a massive fan of this car. I happen to own four, five, one, two, three, five of the real ones. And uh, I located this on eBay several years ago. So now it's about time to slap it onto this chassis. If you're interested in who makes this, Italy makes it. This one here just spins in circles. It doesn't even flash the lights. There's no wiring for that. In fact, comically, if we open up the battery compartment, room for six C batteries, but don't worry, only two are needed. Check this out. So they left all the old ports, but you only put one here and one there, and it should start the car. I've tried it. It does not work. Several other variants of this do exist in different paint schemes. My friend actually has this exact car with turning front wheels and the drive at the rear, which is odd because this is a front wheel drive car, but we'll talk about that later. It's a remote control with the wire, but nonetheless, this one here doesn't seem to have any of that, and I don't care. The car, on the other hand, is a Tamiya. M02L. I don't know what the car was originally. I've had this for quite some time. You can see a number of Ampro parts on here. We've got the front steering arm, the battery retainer, the antenna mount, and um, otherwise the car's just been sitting for years and years and years. So we're going to slap this body onto it. The good news is the wheelbase on this chassis is 240 millimeters, and that is nearly the same as the Fiat. We'll measure that later. The first thing I want to do is take the body off of the well, I guess the underside of the car and see how this is all held together. There are six ish screws that hold this together. I'll explain the ish in a minute. Okay. Standoff on the body is broken. So I'm going to try and glue that and epoxy the hell out of it. It is broken through there, but I think we can fix that. I wanted to really use that as a, uh, as a fixed point to hold the body on, but I don't know if it's doable now. Okay, so flipping the car over, we've got oh, not even a speaker. This is probably not working due to corroded terminals, but it's not even worth trying. Like I said, they made a number of variations of this. The important thing that we need here is the rear bumper and the front bumper. So we'll cut those off cleanly right there and the same at the rear. We'll try and follow this shape and later we can tidy that panel up. Well, that was easy. You gotta get this body post out, which I hope, yeah, I'm just gonna unscrew there. Uh, this is gonna be tough to get to secure because it's obviously, you know, want a lot of stress when you rotate it. So what I'll do is I'll put a couple of little indents on it. I'll kind of leave it ugly like that. And what that's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna create a really good area for the epoxy to bond. And as for the rest of this, let's go ahead and reattach that. And that should just, yeah, perfectly lines up right there. And we'll use a little bit of accelerator. Okay, now when that dries, I'm basically gonna slather that whole thing with uh, epoxy. Before I reassemble the bumpers, let's take a look at the car and how it sits. I'll pull the body mounts off. And 
now we can see how this is going to fit. Oh. All right, so we have a problem already. So this didn't stick. The glue dried beautifully, but it wouldn't bond to the car. Now, there's nothing wrong with the glue. It's the plastic. I want to say that this is polyethylene. Okay, so dropping this on. Wow. I mean, really, it's, uh, it's not far off. Depth-wise, we're good. It's probably going to be sitting around about here. What I would love to do is pick up on these points here to secure the body. What I'm kind of thinking is I will, this actually, yeah, that might work. So I don't want to take the body off when I have to change the battery and that's gonna be necessary here. So I'm thinking the wheelbase does have to be extended around three millimeters. In fact, we'll measure that in a moment. But if I pull out this center section here, I can completely redesign it um, so that the battery is accessible from the bottom. Uh, it can still have a servo mount like that very easily. But more importantly, it can have these runners here, these sills, which will allow the body to get attached. So that might be the way to go. So let's measure the wheelbase on this. So center point there and center, oh my God. I called it, didn't I? I said three millimeters. The difficult part is not going to be creating this, but to be creating the proper offset on this part to secure everything together. So we're going to have to basically select a datum, like the rear wheel, and measure everything from that point to basically from here to here, here to there, here to there, and then add those datum points on this. So I think step one is pull off the center section. This is the chassis that I came up with for the MO2L to get those extra three millimeters. Now there's a number of things that I could have done, but one of the important things was I didn't want to remove the body to access the battery. And that's not possible with this. So let's just remove that. I'll show you what I did. So there is our front and rear, and here is our center section. Now the battery is accessed from the bottom. This is going to make this a bit weaker with the battery not there. You'll see a little bit of flex here, but this car is not going to be some high-performance rally car, whatever. The production model for the MO2L, again, this is three millimeters longer, has a counter brace that goes this way and down so that it will further reinforce this back half here. When you put the battery door on, that'll also help to reinforce it. Those pieces aren't in yet. I had a friend of mine print this pretty quickly because I wanted to get this to try. So the print came out reasonably good. There was some separation right here, but for the most part, it really did come out good. You see the servo goes in this area. I'm tired of talking about this. Let's, let's install it. So let's see if I screwed this up. Yeah, that, that looks good, right? That, that looks pretty good. We'll put this on. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. This goes through here. There you go. Two. That looks good. We'll be able to use our stock nuts over here. Here's the nut. That is how we're going to get our extra three millimeters. You might be wondering how we're going to mount the body. That's actually really easy. I have a set of sliders that go in here that will allow you to raise and lower the body. And then there's something that attaches to that that sets the offset. So those aren't in yet. And I may do something at the front and the rear, but we'll see. Right now I will install the servo in here. We're gonna have to run the screw straight through this hole here. And that should pop it right out in here, maybe? Yeah, it's right there. Let's put the servo back in. Okay, that's, that's it, okay. So we'll that wire there. Okay, for the other side, we have a slot. And that will go right there. The center point and the distance of the main servo gear is identical to where it was on this chassis. This means the steering arm should work exactly as it did before. We're gonna have to reorient the servo horn, but otherwise it should be the same. I'll put the front in like that. Same with the bottom. 
we'll put our nuts in on this side and we'll put that back in from there to there. There we have it. All right, these are the new wheels for the Fiat. I've done a two piece because this nylon is very inexpensive. However, the ultra detail is not inexpensive. So by mixing the two, we'll get the best of both words. This will be a very durable base. I painted this in flat black because I don't want any gloss. A little bit of super glue, just some little bits here and this will just drop straight on top and there's the wheel the black of course is to give the illusion of a larger size tire mm -hmm. 